I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Genesis, chapter 2. I'm not going to be very long. I'm going to just speak for half an hour. But what I'm going to say, I, I, believe, I hope and pray that it's going to touch your life in a very fresh, new way. Last week, we began to teach on tithing under the order of what? Melchizedek. Today, we're going to do part two of that message because of popular demand. Last week was Melchizedek Sunday. But I had people tell me, can you please finish what you did not say? You know, because you hinted to it. Just finish it. So I'm going to finish it. So, so in a sense, we're extending our Melchizedek Sunday because we are continuing what we began last week. So today, the, my, the title of my message is going to be comparing the two tithing systems. Comparing the what? Comparing the what? The two tithing systems. I want you to look at Genesis 2 and look at verse 8 and 9. And the Bible says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Amen? Good for what? So can I submit to you that food is God's idea, amen? You just have to eat within measure though. <laughs> now look at this. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden. So this garden had two trees. Everybody said there were two trees. There were two trees in the garden. And one of the trees was a tree of life. Is that right? Was a tree of what? So one tree was defined by what? Life. Then there was a tree of the knowledge of what? Good and what? So good, the knowledge of what? Good and evil or the knowledge of right from wrong. Right from what? Right from wrong. That knowledge, that kind of gnosis. So, th so this tree was defined by good and evil right from what wrong what is interesting about the two trees that the two trees here in in this passage represent two distinct priesthoods you're going to begin to find that as you go in the bible you're going to find these two trees are prophetic pictures of two what distinct what priestly orders priestly orders the tree of life represents the order of melchizedek the order of what? And I can prove it to you in the book of Hebrews. It says, and Jesus has become the high priest of the order of Melchizedek by the power of an endless what? Life. He has become what? A high priest by the power of what? An endless what? Life. Is that right? So the tree was defined by what? Life. So is there a priesthood that is defined by what? Life. It's the order. So the, the trees were already speaking to two priesthoods that will be revealed in time. How? Because I believe God in his foreknowledge knew that man was going to go against him anyway. How many know God knew that? How many know God never saw Adam do what he did and say, oh myself, I never saw this one coming. There was no surprise because there is tremendous anticipation in foreknowledge. God knows the end from the beginning. Is that right? He's never surprised. Amen? But even though he's never surprised, he never excuses you from responsibility. Do you catch that? Why? Because there's always choice. And he gave them the what? The choice. Amen? He was very clear. They were not to eat from the tree of the what? Knowledge and good and what? evil why was there no restriction against the tree of life because you cannot restrict the life you cannot restrict why because god's intention has always been for humanity to be part of the melchizedek order are you catch what i'm saying so but god never really intended but even though he knew it was going to happen he put the tree in the garden now notice that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil therefore corresponds with the priesthood of Levi. This is a priesthood of what? Okay. Why do I say that? I say that because 
the, the priesthood of Levi was based on, ever said, the law. Say the law. Is that right? Do we agree? The, even the tithing was according to the what? The law. Are you catching what I'm saying? All right? So, you know, so basically this is why the, mount, this is why the law, anywhere you find law, anywhere you find jurisprudence, anywhere in the world, whatever you find the law, law only deals with two concepts, right and wrong. Law, the law never deals with life. It can't. It has no power to give life. It has only the power to judge it. Right or wrong? You can't go to a judge and he gives you life. He can't give you life. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the law only is, deals with the concept of right and wrong. So if you're right, the law acquits you. If you're wrong, the law what? Punishes you. It's impartial. Are you catching what I'm saying? It has no life. It has, it has no feeling. The law... The law is what? That's why Paul says the law is spiritual. But, but, but then he says, but the law that's spiritual has killed me. Are you catching what I'm saying? The law that is spiritual is spiritual, but I, have, I am dead because of the law. So to sin because of the law. Because I find that the law doesn't stop judging me between right and wrong, regardless of my sinful nature. The Lord doesn't even care about that. He doesn't. Why? Because it's a set of code. It's a set of code or books. You can talk to them. You can write them. You can legislate them. But once they're on paper, they're just codes. They won't talk to you. They won't ask you, hey girl, come here. What, what made you do this? The Lord won't even ask you that. It doesn't deal in those constructs. Only life, only life can deal in that construct because life always requires a person. You can't have life. Life requires a person. It requires feeling. It requires touch. It's different. This is why, so, but anyway, these two priests are in the Bible. So they forecast two separate tithing systems. So there's a tithing system that's, that, that, that is according to life. And there's a tithing system that's, that's according to the law. And you catch what I'm saying? And so that, and, and understanding that is very, very important because many of us, the reason why we don't enjoy tithing, don't enjoy tithing, or it's a struggle, is simply because we are doing it from the, from the second tree. We are tithing from the what? Second tree. You, you see what I'm saying? Now I'm going to show you the, the challenges of tithing from the second tree. Amen? So now let's look at the next verse. The next what? Verse, I want you to go, if you do not mind, go to the book of Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. And we're going to read from verse 1 to 11. Again, I'm trying to go as fast as I can. But I hope you're getting the concepts. Are you with me so far? Yes. Amen? Yes. It says, for this Melchizedek, for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, retaining from the slaughter of the what? The kings and what? Blessed him. To whom also Abraham gave a what? A tithe of all. First being what? Translated king of what? Righteousness. Then also king of Salem, meaning what? King of peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having in the beginning of days, not end of life, but made like the son of God, he remains a priest continually. Look at verse 4. Now consider... How great this man was to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. And indeed those who are the sons of Levi who received the, who received the what? The priesthood. They received the what? The priesthood. I have a commandment. Look at this. I have a commandment to receive what? Tithes from the people. According to what? According to what? So in according to the what? Law. So the tithing under Levi was according to the what? Which tree is that on, on, up, on the board? The tree of the knowledge and good and what? Evil. That's the mountain of law. Right and wrong. So they had to correct it according to the what? To the law. Watch this. To the what? To the law. That is from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. But he, notice how it goes from the law to he. Because to have life, you're going you're gonna to need a he person 
To have code, all you need is law. To have life, you need a person. So it goes from law to a he. Are you catching what I'm saying? Amen? That, that, this, is really, this is very, very interesting. Look at this. He says, but he whose genealogy is not derived from them, that means Jesus is not part of the priesthood of the second tree. He's not derived from them, received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the what? The promises. What's very interesting though is, very interesting is this, that Melchizedek first Abla blessed Abraham before he took tithes. Very, very interesting concept. He blessed him, then he took tithes. Very, very interesting. Why? Because in the order of Melchizedek, we don't tithe to get blessed, we tithe because we are blessed. That, that, thinking, that thinking will change you. In the Malachi model, ever, in the Malachi model that you've heard, the reason why you are told to tithe is so you can get blessed. So you are never blessed. You get blessed when you, get, when you tithe. But in the order of Melchizedek, I'm tithing because I'm already blessed. So tithing in the order of Melchizedek is how I acknowledge that the priest has blessed me. Tithing is how I acknowledge to, the, to, to demons, to angels, to principalities, to my friends. It's how I acknowledge to demons. Look at me now. I have been blessed by my high priest. That's why I'm tithing. Now in the order of Levi, because law, court says you've got to do before you get. That's law. But life says, do it because I did it. Do it because it's done. Go get it done because it's already done. Yes. Did you catch that? Yes. That's life. Law says you better do it and if you don't do it right, you, you break this code, we're going to put a sign on your building and condemn your building. But I worked so hard, it doesn't matter. You miss that course. You know, that's, law is like that. You should see when inspectors come to a building. It's code. They walk by what they, they tell you. It's about the code. And the code has no emotion. It has no sympathy. It has no sympathy for the fact that you, you it, it, it has not even sympathized that at least you try. It's cold. It's lifeless. But very demanding. Lifeless, but demanding. Are you catching what I'm saying? So, the, the, so, so I, I, there's a reason I'm doing this because I just want you to understand this subject. I don't struggle with it. I'm not teaching this to get money out of you. See, if you do that, it's that tree that's talking to you. See, that tree that's talking to you. Because that tree, I mean, you struggle with them right and wrong. You see what I'm saying? You know, you're always questioning, asking what is the motive. Always. I mean, he, I mean here, this tree makes people tie like Sherlock Holmes. But when you tie from this tree, you just tie like a son. It's a different, it's a different feeling, it's a different mindset. Are you, are you with me so far? Okay. Now, now look at verse 7. Now, behold, all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the what? The lesser is blessed by the what? Is blessed by the what? Without all contradiction. In other words, without any argument, the lesser is what? Blessed by the better. What is he saying? He's saying that when you're tithing into the order of case, that Jesus has an obligation as the greater one to bless you. Without any arguments. Which means Jesus won't even take arguments from the devil against you. Because the issue, of, the issue is without contradiction by you, by people, or the devil. In other words, when you're a tithing person, Lucifer can come in the courtroom of heaven and accuse and try to argue why you should not be blessed. Are you catching what I'm saying? If the blessing is coming to the tithe, there's no contradiction around it. Because the lesser has to be blessed by the better. Without any contradiction, without any fight about it. See, this is how I my, myself live our life. Are you catching what I'm saying? We live by... We live, we live by this principle so much more than anything else. This principle has literally rescued us from so many things. Rescued us. You know? You know, so I can talk to you. You know, how many know God is raising a new breed without greed? We should have a t-shirt, a new breed without greed. 
We are so used to having everything preached from a place of greed. Look at this. Verse 8. Here on earth, that means here, mortal men receive what? Here. Mortal men what? Receive what? Ties. But there, it goes to here again. There, where? In heaven. He receives them. Of whom it is witness that he lives. See, life. It's all about life in the order of Melchizedek. It's all about life. You are tithing for life, because of life, in life, for life, because of life, in life. That's the only reason. The moment you begin to operate in death, what about if I tithe and there's nothing for me in my family? Death. The Lord says, then you better have it. Why? Because you've left life. That kind of thinking is death. Because that thinking comes from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because only that tree creates self-independence. They never knew themselves apart from God until they ate that tree. So when you start thinking independently of what God has said, you are in death. You are back to the second tree and God says, you know what? You are better off not even tithing because there's no more. You are left. This, this system works through life. In life, for life, because of life. By life. That's it. Not because somebody told you, if you don't die, you're going to curse. You never hear that out of this mouth. The devil is alive. Never. Why? Because I don't want you to tithe from fear. I want you to tithe from life. That's the New Testament. You tithe and you live from life. Notice the only evidence in your life where you are going wrong is where you live life. Every time you live life, you go back to the Every time you live life. Every time you live life. Okay? Even in marriage, every time you live life, your marriage has to die. Because when you live life, there's only other tree. There's only other tree you can live from. Second tree. It's not even that you choose it, it's that it's the default position. You don't even have a choice in it. If you're not in life, you're in the second tree. So, wife does something wrong. Right? Your wife does something wrong, like anybody can do something wrong. Life dictates forgiver. Forgiveness is life. But the second tree says, the devil is alive. I'm the man of the house. How? I mean, so for, I have the right for the next three weeks to be angry with you, girl. You don't talk. Okay, so for three weeks, we are in death now. The marriage is in tailspin of death because somebody chose to live life. See, that's the Melchizedek priesthood. It's about life. The order of Melchizedek is about life. I could choose to forgive her, but death says no. But, but because I'm, I'm jumping in the second tree, the second tree says, no, you have the right to feel this way. After all, did you see how she looked at you? After all, you came home, she never even cooked food. And you are the breadwinner in the house. And you come home to a sow, and where you will see? She was, a, she, was, she, she was the whole day in the salon. You come home and there's nothing to eat. You are tired, me. You, are, you have the right to be angry. Yeah, but you also have the right, you, but you see, that's, you see, you have the right to be angry. And she needs to know. Oh, she needs to know she's wrong. She needs to know she's wrong, man. And then you got your bodies too. Your bodies will also operate in death. You call them. Dog, I, I, I need some counsel. Don't call everybody. Some people, they don't deserve to be called. They are not, they are not spiritual. Don't you call somebody who's not spiritual. Because if they're not spiritual, they'll give you more death. Hey, bad dog. I don't know. I'm angry, man. What, what, what's up, dog? Well, I, I came home, man. I worked the whole day. And you know, man, there was nothing to eat, man. I left the money, man. She, you know where she was? At the saloon, dog. Man, but I'm so angry, man. man. Do you think I should forgive? Her? Do you think, what should I do, dog? Dog, let me tell you, man. Who's the man? Who's the man? And you yeah, man, I mean, and you begin, you, you begin go, you, you begin, you become Godzilla over the phone. Who's the man? I'm the man. Then go home and take care of your business. Go home and take your business, boy. Here comes the wife. 
looking as beautiful as Cinderella. She wants to show him how cute she looks. But the problem is she's, she's not going home to her husband. She's going to chimpanzee. She's going to, to King Kong on steroids. She walks through the door and King Kong pounces. What kind of woman are you? She's like, honey, look at my nails. Nails, nails, nails. I have not eaten. I'm going to show you who's the man. That's the order of Melchizedek. See, the order of Melchizedek is deeper than just whatever. It's how you live life. And Jesus is looking at this because he knows you've left the first tree. You are all up in the second tree, producing all kind of death in your family. Then when your wife leaves you, now you look for a Dr. Mouse to bring life to what you killed. <laughs> oh, Dr. Miles? I didn't mean it. It was my other Chris knucklehead friend who taught me to show her I'm the man. And I, I think I went too far because she gone. Can you come, Dr. Miles? You'd be amazed what people call me into. Now I have to bring you back and you and the girl that's so upset with you, I have to bring you back to the first tree, which is the order of Melchizedek. So, but, so if you tithe, this is why tithing from the second tree is so much trouble. You always have to fight with the people because that the nature of the tree is one Sunday or oh, they tithe. Why? Because they think you're acting right. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, you come to the door, you did not greet them, they're like, he's acting wrong. I was about to give him $300, it goes back to my account. I don't care if it's a tithe. I ain't giving it to him. The devil is a liar. Are you catching you know what I'm saying? Are you catching you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, know, you know I'm happy in your business. It's okay. What? He wrong. He wrong. I ain't giving him, I ain't giving him my tithe. To a man who walks by me and doesn't say hello, the devil is a liar. Now you could choose to forgive me, but you won't. Life, life will, will behoove you to forgive me. Life. But death will say, no, you better hold on to this, baby. I'm talking about tithing. <laughs> We're just talking about tithing. <laughs> <laughs> We're just talking about tithing, baby. It's tithing. From life. From life. By life, through life, by life. That's why Melchizedek never threatened Abraham. There's no threat in Genesis 14. Oh, Abraham. I'm the high priest of God, Most High. If you don't give me a tenth of everything you got, boy, and you got a lot of stuff, boy. If you don't give me that 10%, you're going to be cursed. I'm going to destroy the tires on your car. And you know what? I might even kill your wife. I might put her in the hospital. You, this has been said from the pulpit in the name of tithing. That God will destroy your leg. So he said, you know, they said God's going to get his money one way or the other, even if he breaks your leg. I've heard it from the pulpit in the name of tithing. And people left the church thinking God must be part of the mafia. Because the mafia will break your leg if you don't pay your, your protection money. God ain't from New York. He's from heaven. He's from heaven, baby. And he's not broke either. He ain't broke either. And by the way, this might shock some of you. He love you. I'm going to use the South. He love you. Is that the South? Am I, am I in Alabama? Maybe. He love you. He love you whether you tithe or not. Ooh, that might shock you. He loves you whether you tithe or not. 
He loves you. He loves you. So if you don't tithe, God won't say, well, then this entire week I ain't going to talk to you, girl. I can't even stand to look at you. How dare you come to my church and you don't even tithe and you want to talk to me. The devil is a liar. No, he's your daddy. He'll talk to you even though he knows you are robbing yourself. You see, because God, won't, God will never leave the realm of life to respond to you. God will never leave the realm of life to respond to you. That's why even though they spit on Jesus, spit on Jesus, anybody had the right to cast them out. But that's then the other tree. Even spit on, beat up, he never uttered a word, Isaiah says. There was no vile thing that came out of his mouth. Why? Anything vile comes from the second tree. And even in, under tremendous distress to his personal self, he never left life. So why do you live life? I want you to start tithing from life. You know, <laughs> are you catching what I'm saying? Did it somebody, somebody, did somebody get something from out of that? Did it, did this help you? Yeah. See, most tithing messages make you squeam in the seats. But you are enjoying this one because I'm speaking from life. Most tithing messages, they are spoken from anger. Because a pastor is worried if you don't tithe, he ain't going to eat. But I'm not worried about that. Why? I found my God. And it's amazing how he takes care of us. We can't live life. Are you catching what I'm saying? But I'm, but, I'm invi but I'm inviting you to get involved in tithing from a place of life. Why? Because there are amazing benefits of tithing in the order of Melchizedek. You know, amazing benefits of tithing from that place of life. One of them, like I told you last week, just the knowledge. Come here, Chris. Just the knowledge. Offer me your book like that, like you're tithing. Just the knowledge. Just the knowledge that when I'm tithing, something supernatural happens. According to Hebrews, something supernatural happens. We don't hear this said about offerings. We do hear this said about the tithe. He who is in heaven, the resurrected, exalted Lamb of God, the eternal Lamb of God. He, not your pastor, not the church, he receives them. In tithing, you are actually having an encounter with Yeshua. When I realize this, it changed my life. He receives them. The Bible says, it, it, it was, this is very important, he receives them. He says, here, mortal men, they came to your house, they knocked on your door, whatever, they received it. But in this order, in this order of life, yes. he receives it. Amen. He receives it. Amen. Just, just that. You mean he's coming to me? Yeah. Just like he comes to you in the communion, he comes to you in the tithing. He receives it. He. Because no, no human being can become an, an agency for that. He receives it from your hand. And then says, without any contradiction, Lucifer, demons, you can argue with me. I have to bless her because I'm the greater one in the relationship. Now the problem with most believers as I end, um, you know what? Uh, let me tell you something. I'm just going to obey the Holy Spirit. We may go with this season tithing until I'm done. Is that okay with you? Until I'm done. Amen? So I don't want to go too far today because I, I want to I, I, I conclude the message. But here's, here's what I do want to say. Oh, isn't God good? God is so amazing. He's so incredibly good. You know, he's so incredible. You see, one of the problems that a lot of kingdom people, I, I'm not calling you kingdom people because, I, you know, in the order of my kids, that's the best kingdom people have, is they don't stay long enough for the principle to work for them. 
And the reason why they don't stay long enough is because they can't stay in life long enough. You have to practice living in life. Are you catch what I'm saying? You know, uh, you have to what? Practice, practice what? Practice. Living in life. You know, one of the things I have, one of, for instance, like for me, you know, there was a time I got offended easily. I got my feelings hurt very easily. But then, I, then, it, then it began to bother me so bad because I noticed a pattern was developing. Every time I got offended, I could not connect with heaven. I could not. Because that's when one, one thing God will, will not connect with you. is Because he already told us, if you've got an ought with your brother, put the thing on the ought and go back. You cannot be more clear than go back before you come back to me. Or we ain't talking. So I began to see that pattern developing. Then one day I said, no, I'm tired of walking in death. Because of reacting to people's behavior. Then I realized people are going to be people. Hello? Yeah. They're going to be people. Oh, by the way, you are also going to be people. Come on, somebody. That's life. But the choice then to live in life became mine now. And so I began to work at living in life in the area of offenses. You have to work in the areas of living, living life. And I'm telling you, I'm in a, I am in a scene of my life, it's extremely difficult to offend me. Extremely, extremely difficult. And if I do get offended, oh boy, do I come back very quickly into life. Why? Because I figured it out. Oh, the many times I got offended. None of those offenses mattered more than the fact that I wasted so much time connecting with God. And then when I finally connected, it took me time to build back to where we were before. Yeah. See, see, do you know that with God there is a thing called momentum? Yeah. 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 You can have a momentum in connecting with God. Yeah. But if you break momentum, you have to build it again. Yeah. That is true. That is true. So I said, no, I, 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 I keep building this thing. And God said, what did you... Last one. See, my, my point is this. When it comes to tithing, start building... a building a flow of life. Flow of what? Life, life from there. And tithe, start tithing from life. Do it consistently and begin to see God break, break out for you. Amen? Amen? Begin to see God break out for you. Come celebrating. It's life. When you are tithing, you are connecting to life in the order of Melchizedek. That's it. If it's not in the order of Melchizedek, then you are over there with Levi arguing between right and wrong. You are in Levi expecting, if I do this, God will do this. If I do this. That's why in the book of, Le in, in, as I close, in Malachi, if you, 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 there's, in Malachi 3, it, that, that doesn't say, prove me this day if I will not. Is that right? Yeah. Prove me this day. Prove me this day. Amen? That's not a good statement. Because if you have to prove him, you don't believe him. You're beginning from the wrong place. Prove, you don't prove somebody you trust. You only prove somebody you don't trust. What God is telling, I know you don't trust me, but just give me a chance. That's what he's saying. Just give me a chance. We give everybody a chance except God. So God is in this system where he's saying, give me a chance. So prove me is not a good statement. It ought to break your heart. It ought to break your heart. Show me one place where Jesus ever proved God. Even Luce, the first temptation of Jesus from Lucifer was to try to make him prove God. If you are the son of God, do this. In other words, prove him like they did for 4,000 years. And he looked at Lucifer and said, Lucifer, are you kidding me? That shall not tempt the Lord thy God. No, that shall not prove. You're not called to prove God. You're called to believe him. You're going to trust him. See, that's not a statement from life. It's a statement from death. Prove me this day. If I will not. If I will not. Okay? So the problem with that position is this now. Chris, come back again one last time. Did you get Jerry? Where's Jerry? Oh, no, no, Pastor, Pastor, no, Elder, Elder Marcos. Sorry. Go and play the keyboard. I'm, I'm done. 
just give me, get, bring the tithe again. Just, just do a prophetic. So prove me. So, so, yes, yes. So, so Chris has a prove me mentality, and I'm God. Okay? All right? And he's in the prove me mentality. That's what he's been taught. Prove me this day. Okay? So give me the tithe now. Okay? So when the moment I received the tithe, what has Chris become to me? My judge. Because I have now have an obligation to prove to him that I was not lying. So who is now the judge? The man. And God is the one on the stand trying to prove I'm not a lying God. I don't lie. I do whatever I say I'm going to do. But I love you so much, I'll let you be the judge of your own God. So you know I'm not like the idols of the Egyptians or the idols of the, phone, of the Babylonians. I am a God who talks. I'm a God who loves. I'm a God who lives. It was not a good statement. And yet pastors, prosperity preachers, they jumped on it as a powerful statement on prosperity. You would have slapped yourself. You would have been weeping in the corner that we have fallen to that level where a majestic God has to be judged by the people he created. The moment I took it, he took it. But see, that's, that's why one time I had him I had this thing comes to me. I had like weeping. And the Holy Spirit said to me one time, he said to me, Francis, I'm a humble God. Now, if this is not humility, since if this is not humility, if this is not humility, to be the God of creation, who's created galaxies that will make the earth look like a coin. Some galaxies, is that right? Some planets are so big, the earth looks like a coin. And God made them. And now here's God talking to a man who in his essence of size, the man looks like an insect to a great, great God. But that little insect just told God, show me you don't lie. Open those windows, do this for me, show me. Because I've given you my money, you better show me. And yet he was so humble enough because he wanted to bless this little insect. He was so humble enough he still took. The angels are like, that's why the angels, the Bible says, they were surprised. What is man that you are so mindful of him? Because if an angel tried to do that, just one look, the angel will be cast out. But, but why do you bend yourself to like this? Angels are asking him, why do you do this to man? He, he's, he's doing stuff we can't even do. Angels bow when they see him. It's only man who says, prove me. This little insect, prove to me that you say who you are. Prove to me. And because he's an humble God, he takes the tithe from the insect. And he begins to open the windows of heaven so the insect can believe he's God. In the order of Melchizedek, we deal with life. Just life. Just life. Just him. Just life. Just life. Somebody say life. Somebody say God gave me life. See, life is what you are looking for. You just don't know it. You think it's money? No. Life is what creates everything. You want life in your finances, all right? You want life in your home, in your marriage, right? So what you really want is not money, it's life. <laughs> it's life. If your business is going down and you are trying to work to put it back, it's not the profit you are looking for as much as you are looking for life. Because you say, if I keep losing money like this, my business will be dead and closed. So what you are really looking for is not money, it's life. It's what we are all looking for, life. And it's what the order of Melchizedek offers us, life. Raise your hands and just thank him for life. Thank him for life. Thank him for life. Thank him for life. 
Thinking for life. Thinking for life. Thinking for life. He's bringing life to you right now. Thinking for life. He's giving you life right now. He's giving you marriage life. He says, I don't want to see your marriage die. I want to see life between you and your husband. God says, I want to see life between you and your children. God says, I want to see life. I want to see life. I want to offer you life. I want to offer you Life in your singlehood, God says, I still want to give you life. See, most singles have no life until they get married. The devil is alive. He wants to give you life, He wants to give you life in your business. Somebody say, Life. See, God is coming and is kissing businesses, businesses right now because he sees your business dying and he's going to kiss it right now. Life. Because what you need is life. What you need is life. Some of your body are messing with you. But God says, I'll give your body life. That's why he's going to heal you because your body is begging for life. It's not the healing you are, look, you are looking for. It's life. But the life looks like healing, but it's just life. God has said, I'll give you life. I'll give you life. I'm the God of life. I'm the God of life. And I'll give you life. I'm the God of life. I gave life. I gave life. Now that I live, now that I live, you never, never, never have to die. Because I gave you life. He didn't say the sheep my father has given me. I gave them life. He said that. Say the people God has given me, I gave them life. That's what's missing in hell, his life. God says, I gave you life. Receive life. Some of you have been needing it. Receive life. Life is coming. In your marriage, receive life. In your business, receive life. At your job, receive life. Some of you, you went through a devastating divorce. And the enemy has been stealing your life. But God says, I gave you life. She may not be there. Or he may not be there. But God says, I still give you life. I gave you life. Get up above, Sata. Because I'm the God of life. I gave you life. I gave you life. It's yours. Freely. I gave it, says the Lord. It's yours. Not death, but life. For death is of the evil one, said the Lord. Life is your portion. So he gives you life. Let's have the people that are going to be doing. We're going we're gonna to tithe and give offerings from life today. I'm not going to give no offering message. It's, the message was the offering message. Whatever I'm going to do, whatever I call it. Just do it from life. And by the way, I remove from every one of you those who have suffered for years from the condemnation that Pastor has told you under the Malachi model that you are cursed because you're not tied. Somebody say, I am not cursed. I'm blessed. For God gives me life. So I remove... 
I remove from you every authority curse that came from the pulpit against you. I remove in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ every authority curse where a pastor you submitted to cursed you from the pulpit because you did not give the tithe. I remove the curse that Lucifer has been using. I ask the courtroom of heaven to dismiss the charges against you. I ask the courtroom of heaven to dismiss the charges against you and declare you not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Receive life. Now begin to tithe from life. Just like Jesus told the woman, please just come over here. Whenever you're ready, just come over here. I'll be talking. Just like Jesus told the woman, told the woman who was found in adultery, she was caught in adultery. The law said, Death! They were chanting, Death! Death! When they brought her, she knew death was in her future. But she was mistaken. God was about to give her life. They caught her in the very act of adultery and they were taking her to death. Stones already in hand. Because they believed if Jesus obeys the laws of Moses, we're going to kill her. He will give us the permission to kill her. So they brought her and she was so scared. She was so rattled, rattled terrified because being stoned to death is not a nice way to die it is not a nice way to die and they said Jesus the Lord Moses says if a woman is caught in adultery she is to be stoned we caught this woman in the very act what, what say you and the Bible says he began to write on the ground I'm sure maybe not on the ground. I will give a life. <laughs> I will give a life. So he, the Bible says he raised his head and he said to them, If any of you is not without sin, let him be the first one to bring death. And the Bible says, slowly, one by one, stones began to fall. Because when life takes over, stones of judgment fall to the ground. Stones of judgment fall to the ground when life takes over. And surely enough, the Bible said from the youngest, from the oldest to the youngest, they left as he kept riding on the floor. How I gave a life. How I gave a life. Then he said to me, woman, where are those who condemned you? <laughs> She's crying. She says, I don't know where they went. They went one after the other. They're gone. And the evidence of what they tried, the evidence is here, the stones are on the ground. They are all gone. He says, neither do I condemn you. Is that right? Neither do I what? Go and sin no more. The only thing that can stop you from sinning is life. It's only life. It's only life. If you think right and wrong will stop you from sinning, you just sin the more. Only life can make you do anything. Whether it's tithing, whether it's giving, by giving seeds, of breakthrough, whether it's loving your husband, whether it's loving your children, whether it's praying, every activity in the kingdom, in the order of can never come from right and wrong. It must only come from life. Pray from life. Don't pray because you are guilty. Pray from life. Don't pray because you think God is going to kill you. Pray from life. Everything must come from life. 